Step number one is getting enough sleep. I cannot emphasize enough how important sleep is for our bodies, our general well-being and our immune systems. I used to get sick very often because I had insomnia and this insomnia was mainly linked to me having anxiety. So my mind was just running all the time, constantly overactive. I would wake up from sleep and try to get back to sleep and I couldn't because my mind was already turned on, it's working on different things, being stressed out, couldn't sleep. So I had to address my anxiety and get rid of it before I started sleeping better. The thing is, you will not sleep well until you address this anxiety because all of your sleep problems are linked to you being too anxious. This is my general rule of thumb for sleep. So people just say, oh, seven to nine hours of sleep. No, people don't say this. You should align your sleep to your activity levels. So if you are an active person, you have an active job, maybe you're stressed out, maybe you're like working two jobs and you're physically active all the time, you're in the gym, you know, pumping iron, and then you're trying to sleep for seven hours, obviously you will get sick because this is not enough recovery for the inflammation levels that are in your body at the moment. So as we're active, as we're running around doing things, our bodies get inflamed. And for us to get rid of that inflammation, we need to recover by sleeping. So if you are a person who's sitting at home, not stressed out, working from home, you know, sitting eight hours a day, you may not need 10 hours of sleep because you can just get by on seven hours or even less because you're not as active. So align your sleep to your activity levels and address your anxiety. Step number two, avoid sugars and ultra processed foods. So we talked about inflammation in the previous section, didn't we? Guess what makes those inflammation levels rise back up? Sugars and ultra processed foods. So this is my general rule of thumb for this section. When you are shopping for food, when you're going around your house and you're deciding what to eat, look at the back of the packet and read it. There's a nutrition list when it says like calories and protein and sugars and carbohydrates. Read that, look at the sugars and see if it exceeds like five grams. If it exceeds five grams, do not consume that because this is most likely a product that contains added sugars, which you're trying to avoid. This is like basically me giving you a bowl of cereal and then pouring sugar on top of it and saying, here you go. This is not good for you. This raises those inflammation levels, which then again, get you sick very often. As for ultra processed foods, we need to read that ingredients list on the product that we're buying, that we're consuming. If a random person was to come up to you and give you a random sweet that you don't know the brand of, it's just a random sweet, it might be like poisonous or something, gives you, would you eat this random sweet? A random stranger just passes you a sweet. Would you eat it? I wouldn't because I don't know what that is. So this is what you're doing every single day by consuming these random ass ingredients on this packaging. If you do not know what a word means, do not consume that because it's just a random chemical that's added to the food that's not meant to be there. So if it says like sodium laureate sulfate, <laughs> it's like something from shampoos, but like still, if it, if it says something that you do not understand, don't eat it. Buy something else that does not have a word that you don't understand. And also, what you want to make sure is you avoid palm oils, rapeseed oils, and any kind of oil additives. Those are also very good at bringing those inflammation levels up. So avoid sugars and ultra processed foods. Number three, hot and cold exposure. Now, every single person on this planet that I know is talking about hot and cold exposure. Your favorite podcasters, YouTubers, your grandmother, everyone is talking about the subject of the benefits of the cold water, the ice baths, the showers, the sauna. What they do for us is they reduce that inflammation. You guessed it. Inflammation seems to be the number one cause of you getting sick. So you reduce inflammation levels by building up these heat shock proteins, by building up a layer of brown fat in your body from cold exposure. These things are the best at preventing you from being sick. So how do you utilize these things like the sauna and the cold showers like to maximum efficiency? So when it comes to saunas, what you want to do is you want to have three sessions of going to the sauna a week that are 17 minutes long. So you want to stay in the sauna for 17 minutes every single session, three times a week. This makes 51 minutes of going to the sauna and this is the best at building up those heat shock proteins, increasing your testosterone and so many other things like sleeping well and reducing anxiety, reducing inflammation. All of these things are managed by the sauna. 
Now, when it comes to cold showers, what you want to do is literally be there for a minute. You don't even have to be there for like 10 minutes. Like all these people say, oh, 10 minutes in the cold shower. No, you don't need to do that. Say your cold shower to the coldest setting that you have, the literal coldest setting. Start with your head onto your face, your body, go back to your head. Literally, all you want to do is get that shock that makes you go like, <gasps> you know, and then manage to regulate your breathing. Regulate that breathing so you're breathing like normal. Do that one minute, maybe two minutes max. You don't need to do more. Don't mess around going into the hot water first and then going to cold or the opposite way around. You want to end on cold. Whatever you do, end on cold. But even if you're just going into the cold water and ending on cold water or if you if you're a pussy hot water and then cold water after that but you have to end on cold these things will prevent you from getting sick and building up brown fat in your body this brown fat is a very good way of you not being sick it's a good way of releasing all of this stress in your body and reducing these inflammation levels back down number four what is intermittent fasting and how can you use it to prevent yourself from getting sick so intermittent fasting is basically when you pick a time window where you're eating food and all of the other time, all of the rest of the time, you're not eating a single bit of food, not a grape, not a raisin, not a bit of bread, not a chocolate, nothing. You're able to eat nothing apart from water. So you're picking a time window. It's six hours, eight hours, or 10 hours. You're picking this time window where you're eating food and all the rest of the time, you're not consuming a single bit of food apart from water. Let me emphasize on that. No food at all. This is called intermittent fasting. What will this do? Have a guess. Reduce inflammation levels. <laughs> so you want to reduce those inflammation levels and give your body a break from digestion and all of these processes that are going on in your body while you're eating food. Every single time you go for a snack, you eat a grape, your body's digestive system is working again, inflammation levels are going up. You want to give your body a break for as long as possible. My intermittent fasting window is 18 hours of fasting and six hours of eating. So I would pick a time from one to seven in the evening where I eat food. So 1 p.m. is my first meal or so, like in and around 1 p.m. is my first meal. And I make sure my last meal is not after 7 p.m. This will give my body enough of a break to rebuild everything that it needs to do to recover, to reduce those inflammation levels and prevent me from getting sick. Number five, do not identify yourself as somebody who gets sick often. Now, you may think this is some mumbo jumbo bullshit that I made up, but listen, self-belief and self-identity is very important. If you're a kind of person that says, oh, I think I'm getting sick, or oh, my nose is runny, I think I'm getting sick, or if you're outside for too long and you say, oh, I'm, I'm probably going to get sick now. This is what I used to say, and I always used to get sick a week after. So once I stopped saying this, once I stopped identifying myself as somebody who gets sick often, I stopped getting sick as often. Obviously combined with all the other things that I'm doing, but this was a big part of me getting sick. It was like psychological and these things really work. If you believe that you're a retard, you will probably be a retard. If you believe somebody, like if you believe that you're somebody who is stupid, you will be stupid. If you constantly say, oh, like, I, I am not smart, I'm, I'm, I'm a silly guy, you will be that. So the same thing is when you're saying, oh, I'm probably gonna get sick, I'm a person that gets sick often, you will get sick often. I used to say this to my girls and my friends all the time. Oh yeah, I think I'm gonna get sick soon. What happens? I get sick. Self-belief is very important. Do not identify yourself as somebody gets sick often. Bonus tip, do not overload your body. Listen to the science, look for the science, what I used to do is, I used to wake up at five o'clock in the morning, go to work, I work as a postman, walk for like 10 kilometers, which is seven miles, cycle a lot because I'm on a bicycle, go to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu at 12 p.m., right? An hour and a half of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, proper sweating, then go into the gym for an hour and a half, pumping iron, and then going to the sauna for two 40 minute sessions. You may think, oh man, you must sleep so well after doing that. No, it's too much. Listen to the science. If your body's telling you that you may be doing too much, then maybe you are. Slow down, take it easy. If you're doing a lot, be clever with yourself. Don't, don't just assume that your body is able to 
be like this superhuman thing that is capable of doing anything. No, it has its limits. Slow down, take it easy, because if you do too much, you will also get sick. So do not overload your body, very important. So those are my tips of preventing colds and flus and other sicknesses. There was a lot covered in this video, but the number one thing for you to consider is reduce inflammation levels. This is the most important thing. Reduce those inflammation levels, you will not be sick as often. And this will also prevent other things like getting cancer in the future and all these other nasty diseases. So if you enjoyed this video, consider liking, subscribing, commenting down below on what you think and tell me how often you get sick. If you're looking to solve some interpersonal issues that you may be having or just talk one to one, consider booking a coaching call in the description below. Thank you for watching this video. Peace.